All right, hello, it's me, it's Chris. We're doing yet another cold read, but with a slight difference. You see in up there, the two humans. They are <laughs> the founders of that company there. <laughs> We've never met. Have we met? No. Oh, oh. Yeah, briefly, face to face. Did we? Oh, bollocks. Where was that? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for remembering. No, it's for like two minutes. <laughs> Start again? <laughs> no, no, we roll with it. My promise is to I'm never joking. edit. Okay, um, that's embarrassing. Anyway, um, so <laughs> at least I don't remember anything about the company. Um, uh, so I'm going to say you never everything. Heard of what? <laughs> You've never heard about the company. Excellent. All right. So I'm going to say everything I think out loud as I think it from um, an investor's point of view. And just for context, I have invested in two main ways. Once as a VC or as a VC, which basically means I make my, I, I do it professionally to get a return on investment, but then also as an angel investor to support the founders. And if I do make my money, then brilliant. Um, but it's not necessarily the only goal. Um, I am going to just say everything out loud as I think it. And I'm sorry in advance. <laughs> All right, here we go. So, Peach, grocery shopping 2.0. Okay, doesn't really tell me very much, but that's fine. I can see 14 slides down in the corner, which is good, which means I'm going to read it at the pace you probably intend. Um, all right, let's go to it. Uh, the food we produce and eat is killing us. Oh, man. You're picking a topic which I'm obsessed with, like absolutely obsessed with. And that it, it's a growing, so what's going through my mind from, the, from an investor's point of view is that I know more people like me are becoming obsessed with this, but there's so much misinformation that it's incredibly difficult to get past somebody's biases, particularly around something as emotive as food. Now, just to share my my, my position on all this, I, I, I'm a believer in evolution, all those kind of things. We have evolved to eat food which comes from the ground or from animals, and as such, the closer we can get to that, the healthier we're gonna be. Um, I'm not saying you can't reproduce some of that with science, but I'm saying if you don't need to, why bother? Um, so yes, it's true. I think that a lot of Diary of a CEO podcasts uh, episodes uh, uh, in this subject. Okay, don't need to convince me of the problem. I know the problem. The solution, help shoppers navigate the opacity and make informed choices. Now, there's a lot of startups right now as well building. There's one called Perfecta, I believe. It was just on a podcast the other day, um, which is essentially trying to create custom shopping lists based upon somebody's food beliefs. Um, I don't know how much they've raised. I'll probably check that out. Um, help shoppers navigate. Okay, fine. I just, yeah, fine. Okay, whenever I see a screenshot of anything, I expect it to exist. Um, if it doesn't exist, that's a problem. Okay, so you, this, you're taking the Zoe approach to things, taking a barcode scan, giving nutritional whatever information. Uh, fine. Well, yeah, it all makes sense. Okay, I'm starting to think, show me what exists. Fine. Business model. Plus, 1999 a year. But I still, I'm not entirely sure on the problem. So it's hard to price the product against the problem. You see, when there's, when I'm presented with the price of a product, but I don't know the value of the solution, it's hard to understand if the business model makes sense. So what, what I would have expected to have seen by now is something that says, oh, and by the way, um, people are currently spending X amount of pounds per year on nutritional information for their own personalized food uh, is, and is growing whatever. Something, I would have liked to have seen something like that so I can know whether 1999 is reasonable or not. And that doesn't really matter at this stage because I still don't know what stage the company is. Uh, I don't, so frankly, if it's early stage, I don't, I don't really care. Fuck it, I don't care. Market validation. The NH so I read, <laughs> I read that as the NHS has 750,000 users. I think it's got a few more than that. Um, close to 60 million. Um, Yucca, I don't I actually don't know. Why, why do I not? Okay, like, because I still don't know how Yucca and all these other things compare to you. I don't know if this is good or bad. All right, I'm getting a bit bored now. It's seven slides. I'm like, where's, where's the business? If this is a concept stage deck, like, I'm still going because I love the subject and I believe I'm informed, but I might be wrong. Okay, here we go. 
On average, 80% of adults do their own grocery shopping and share the responsibility. Share responsibility of what? Of these grocery shoppers, 63% try to eat healthy most or all the time. I mean, that is one of those self-reflecting statistics that means absolutely nothing. It basically says, if you ask someone if they eat healthy, they're going to say yes. Um, will they eat healthy? Who knows? And what does health mean in this context? No one really fucking knows. Uh, we will target this audience at a price of nineteen ninety nine, and still don't know what you do! You're taking pictures and telling people stuff about the food. Cool. Could do that on the internet. You're the only one that requires no manual input. Bullshit, Zoe. Uh, I'm an investor in Zoe. Uh, product aggregation. Um, so you have a... Uh, Zoe. <laughs> like the thing is, it's like, even though there's a company that exists that isn't, that didn't start for the same reason that you started, doesn't mean they don't address the same problems that you do. And so when investing, I want to understand what macroeconomic trend are you following and what problems are occurring because of that trend and how you are addressing some of those issues. Now, although Zoe started from a slightly different problem perspective, they are following the same damn trend. Um, and that is a beast of a competitor to be, de to be dealing with. Um, we believe we can disrupt the market. So does everyone. Design-led, late mover, late mover. So you're positioning yourself as the apple of this market. Gamification. Ding, 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 ding. A word that doesn't do anything. Um, okay. Um, Amadeus, is that Amadeus Capital? Um, I'd probably not. Uh, Ivo, 15 years of brand product. Okay, fine. I mean, I don't really see any nutritional background there. Don't really see any nutrition background there. I certainly don't see a nutrition background there. I mean, finding an opportunity is fine. Being the right people to execute it is another matter. Don't give a fuck about roadmap. The ask 350K pre-seed design development OPEX. All right. I, Okay. Truthfully, this is one of those things that's really, I'm a very, I, I will not give a more general, generalized opinion here because this is very close to home for me. In particular for a venture that I'm actually considering starting, this is not competitive at all, but it's related. Um, I'm trying to consider a, a, a tackling, a, like there's a, there's a belief system that, this isn't me pitching, this is putting you in context, is there's, there are two root causes now of pretty much every societal issue. And that is one is processed food and the second is the lack of human connection. And so we're getting industries around loneliness. We're getting industries around kind of food as medicine. And um, I want to try and address some of those things. But what you're, you're tapping onto a macroeconomic trend which matches the science, which is fantastic. And I'm biased. So I want to engage with this. So I have a motivation to engage with this that I wouldn't have if I was looking at this you know, without an interest level. And what that essentially means is that I probably would take a meeting only for that reason, only for that reason. But if, it, if I didn't have such a compelling interest in this, and truthfully, one of the reasons I would do it, and will do it because we're going to chat, is uh, I selfishly want to know what you know. Maybe not to invest. And frankly, that happens a lot, particularly at VCs. They will take meetings simply because they want to do some business, some you know, investment intelligence. They want to peg other opportunities against you. They have no intention of investing in you whatsoever, but they will extract all the information they possibly can if they think you've done research that they haven't. And I worry this pitch deck will fall into that camp because you've given me screenshots with no evidence of traction. And I think what you're trying to do is give screenshots to demonstrate how you want it to work, not what you've done. And because your backgrounds don't necessarily, on paper at least, match the problem, this feels like an MBA project. And most investors will not invest in an MBA project. So to me, I would take a meeting, but I would never recommend it to anybody else based upon the pitch deck. As it stands. All right, there we are. Done. <sighs> Hi. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, I don't know what to do here. I've not done this before. Um, tell me your thoughts. What's your reaction? Like, what what lands? What doesn't? Um... My my initial reaction is that we obviously need to make it clear in the pitch deck that we are focusing around trying to minimise people's consumption of processed foods, and we are 
the way I see Zoe is it's very scientific and nutritional. You know, you've got, it's very personalized and custom. You've got this kind of thing that you put on your arm. Mm -hmm. However, we are literally a shopping assistant where you've got the recipes, you've got your nutritionist, you've got that part of the user journey done. But when you're in the supermarket and you've got the choice of five different cans of something or five plant milks or five loaves of bread, we're just going to tell you which one is least processed. And I think this is a part. You do know that's exactly what, what is... Zoe does. No, I didn't know they had a feature that does solely that, to be do honest. Do you have Zoe? No, we have You've... looked into well, it, but we should. haven't paid for it. <laughs> mm. So, well, so... The, the... So, sorry, uh, um, through our research, what I thought. Uh, Zoe was doing is literally like um, monitoring whatever you consume, although they help you source certain items. I think our part of the journey, I, I know we've put like stuff like my fitness power chronometer inside of the pitch deck as a as an indirect competitor. I think we wanted to position ourselves in the journey really like at the beginning when mm -hmm. people are chilling to educate themselves because I think a big part of what the movement is happening is awareness. So people are getting all sorts of information from documentaries on Netflix, from the news, from left, right, and center. And a lot of people as well don't potentially don't have the money to uh, buy a subscription with Zoe. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the positioning of like trying to help people make better decisions when it comes to the grocery at the very early stage of the whole cycle um, was what we're trying to achieve. And I think also UK, for example, is our most direct competitor, which is um, an app that helps you scan barcodes and have information about additives that is in your food, et cetera. So you make more informed decisions. I think um, a lot of the criticisms uh, around UK was about the scoring. So a lot of people that are educated, like yourself, for example, might have, um, my struggle with the scoring of a product outside of the context because you don't really you can't really score a product when it's outside the context and our our angle here is to actually try to aggregate everything that you buy in supermarket to give you an overview of your diet so you can identify the areas where you can improve for example you buy a lot of uh, products that's got this additive or saturated fats or anything that is actually bad for you, we will highlight these areas and tell you which products we should try to remove from your diet. Well, so, so let's, um, let's be careful to, to make sure that the lens of the conversation is through the, through the lens of a deck, because otherwise we'll, we'll derail. But just building, building on what um, you're saying, like, I think it's a, what this is demonstrating to some degree, and, and you've kind of compounded it a little bit, is, is that there might not be an awareness of the venture community's activity in your space. Like you're, you're, you're picking up on things that are well known in the con probably the consumer world or um, other worlds, but not the investor world. So one of the, the most effective things anyone can do when picking up competition uh, is to go on crunch base and see what's raised a seed, an A or a B round. And those are the things that should be in your pitch deck because those are the things that investors are really focusing on. Um, of course, there are going to be some big dogs in the room and so on and so on. And you can talk about how you're different, but where, what this, what you haven't necessarily addressed in what you, what you've said is anything that really relates to the things that you uniquely have done and what you have proved as founders to validate that you are the right ones to build this thing. And that's, that's really the lens here. So, um, let's, um, let me ask you a couple of questions and then I'll, pick, I'll pitch Peach back to you and see if it helps in any way in, in re reforming a deck. Um, does anything exist? And it's not a problem if it doesn't. Does anything exist? A prototype that we've uh, designed to start to get some uh, feedback from users and just like test certain journeys to see basically like um, if they've got any struggles, if... Uh, what they find useful, what they don't find useful to just really like refine. We're just on the design phase at the moment. And what, what about that particular um, kind of prototype? What what kind of information are you trying to get from that which you can't get from looking at the behaviors of other products? 
um, well, it's it's just like so. So in in this type of product, some a, a big hurdle that we will have is information overload. So the users when they find something too complex or uh, hard to find information that they are seeking. Uh, they kind of like stop using the app and we want to basically like refine and use our advantage because Yuka has got a lot of users, a lot of people that love Yuka and they've they've grown quite big 50 in million, yeah, 56 million just with organic growth, but they don't have a design team at all. They just train staff and some stuff stick. But I think we've identified a lot of areas that we can improve and we want to validate this assumption through testing. Um, and this is basically the stage we are at at the moment. Okay. And have you taken any funding of any kind? No. And when, uh, how long have you been doing this? Together? Just our uh, January? Since January. Um, okay. And so what is it about your background that believes you can do this? Well, my, my mom in 2021 got bowel cancer. So basically just to, um, just to really like understand what caused it and what we can do to avoid or what basically like that to remove half of her gut as well. So she can't digest like normal people do now. Mm -hmm. So it's all about trying to find the right foods that one will not cause any more problems with her bowel in the future. And two will help uh, just get uh, good levels of um, nutrients, energy, um, uh, immune system as well. Like everything, we discovered so much uh, that is linked to food and we are gathering all this information potentially due to our background as product designers. We kind of have to become experts on, on a topic uh, very, very fast in each industry where, where we work. Uh, and uh, we just became like obsessed by the topic, yeah. to be fair. My mum also became ill and our CTO actually has just had a baby. So he's now been thrown into nutrition stuff for his wife and his child. So we've all kind of come at it together, even though we've got no qualifications in it. We're very in the thick of it. You just care more than most, it sounds. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously, we would like to get advisors on board and we would get everything checked out scientifically. Yeah. Uh, but I th think that would come slightly, slightly later stage, as in like a couple of months' time. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, and so this, is a, this is a problem. Oh, and now after you, please. So, no, 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 sorry, sorry. Oh. I'm Still water. <laughs> uh, now, we're seeing like, for example, Zoe has got Team Spectre that is doing a lot of, obviously, like, is known in, in the space and just in speaking in documentaries and in any. What Team Spectre does for Zoe, I think we would like to involve Chris Van Tuliken, that is doing a lot of awareness when it comes to sourcing the food and processed foods, just, just raising the awareness around these topics uh, and potentially like entice somebody like him to actually create this kind of awareness or if he buys into the mission of Peach to potentially like uh, be on the board if, if it's something that is uh, interesting. Okay. Um the, the 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 person that oh, where is it? I will find it and I will send it to you. There's there's one research scientist around sugar in particular who started out with sugar and the the science of fructose. He then moved into exactly what you're doing. Will be a, a wonderful human who's not tapped up completely. What's his name? <laughs> oh, that's his name. Come on, Robert Lustig. Robert um, Lustig. So anyway, let me pitch it back to you. How? how I would probably want to hear a pitch like this to give it the best possible chance with me, at least. It'll be something, and, 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 you know, an, an intro pitch deck is just a story. And so it's about being able to convey that story you know, without you doing it as humans. Um, and I would probably present it something along the lines of, um, we are three obsessed human beings that have spent the last 10, 15 years working in consumer and commercial environments to build some of the most advanced consumer products ever to exist. Whether it's working with EY, whether it's working with Amadeus, whether it's working with who else. We are experts at listening to a market and building what the market wants. And we found ourselves being that market. So we looked into our own issues, in particular, what the heck is happening with making this 
crazy science regarding nutrition and well-being and how it affects your core health to your mental health to your kids health to your ability to work and sleep and whatever how do we make that body of science accessible to just the everyday human being in a supermarket right now there are products and applications like zoe which are really great if you want to understand your gut microbiome if you're a hobby scientist it's a brilliant fucking thing but it's also three to four hundred pounds a year not only that, you've got these things like Yucca, which when you do get the information, you're, you need a PhD to understand at least 10% uh, uh, you know, of it. It makes no sense. So we're having all these people aware of the issues of processed food without any information to make informed decisions, without spending 10, 15 hours work. Oh, by the way, this information economy is worth £86 billion pounds per year. So we, as experts in bringing new consumer-based information products to market have seen our own problem emerge. It's emerged for 86 billion pounds worth of business elsewhere, and there is not a single product you can use in a supermarket en masse to know whether that thing is going to kill you. That's peach. <laughs> We're raising 350,000 pounds to get us off the ground. We've got a prototype that's been in the hands of some users to make sure that what we're really testing is, can we say a lot with very little? And we've got X number of users. Y have given us you know, 150 data points to improve and iterate. They're basically our test subjects. We've got enough information now to, to, to bring this product into a prototype phase with consumers in mind. Uh, we want to make sure we're well armed. Uh, from a financial and shareholder point of view. And this is the cheapest it's ever going to be, by the way. So if you want in, now's the time. Thanks very much. That would be my pitch, something like that. Amazing. So can I ask you a question? Because um, obviously, like the pitch deck that you've just seen, we try to fit into the must-have slides. And obviously, like <laughs> what you just presented is more like what we wanted to convey, but obviously it doesn't fit into the template that people are expecting kind of thing. And I remember when... <laughs> Sorry? I think I just asked you. Go on, after you. After you. Uh, uh, no, I, I also remember at Demo Day, I don't know if you remember when you came to Demo Day in April, uh, you explained about a curve, about like the interest on a company and it's just kind of like yeah, there's this wave. Uh, and you were saying like, Pre-seed companies, you expect to see uh, just people that are, that are experimenting, trying to validate assumptions, which is exactly what we're doing. But obviously, in the deck, we are trying to communicate it in a way that might might entice investors. So, I've got this kind of like uh, discrepancy when I was when I'm, I'm more into like the mission. I want to to explain exactly what you just did. I mean, potentially trying to do it as good as you just did right now. Uh, and the mind, and in mind as well to communicate that we, we are validating all these assumptions, speaking with users, creating a community in the background. Uh, but obviously, like I'm not sure how to present that into a deck and and how how enticing it would be for investors as well. Interesting. Um, I don't know if we're gonna have time because I need to I need to jump in in about ten minutes. But let's do a little experiment. Let's see if I've got time to do it. Um, that might help with this. Let me uh, share my screen with you so you can see what I'm doing. We'll go into that new tab here. So there's a, a method of writing pitch text, which I really like, uh, called um, pink. <laughs> I think it's stolen from the world of corporates when you make a, make a pink document. But anyway, I just call it a pink deck. Uh, that's horribly large. Let's just go in there. So it's where basically you do the headline narratives together with someone and go, oh, that makes sense. And then you fill in the detail afterwards. So Peach, I'd probably start. So at first, um, I'm, I'm winging this, by the way. So I'd probably go back a dozen times and change it. But just first glance, if I was going to say, we are suffering from information overload when it comes to managing our health. In particular, nutrition. Da, 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 da. The big ones in the market are focusing on celebrating how smart they are. 
And that's where you can speak to Zoe, you can speak to Yuka, whatever. But picture this. And then a picture of like, I don't know, some old person in a supermarket going, am I, will this kill me? <laughs> you know, just something like that. So image of someone looking confused in a supermarket. And then same thing. Now picture this. <laughs> Same person scanning the barcode, <laughs> looking happy they won't die. <laughs> Something like that. And then you really want to compound the fact that this hasn't been solved. You'd think this has been solved by now. And then this is where you're saying something like, you know, 86 million pounds per year spent just on nutritional advice. Um, we are consumer tech experts having built some of the most advanced and oversimplified products <laughs> ever to exist. Something like that. Um, we have created our own lab. So don't call it an MVP. If you call it an MVP, people will think that's the thing that you're going to try and sell. If you call it something like a lab or a test station, you get licensed to be able to delete it and who gives a fuck, right? We have created our own lab. X um, testers, Y experiments, Z data points. And then, you know, you put your key learning, key learnings in that and you say, this is our first round. We want to be well armed to perform our next set of tests and build the first product. It's okay if you don't want in, but chicken, something like that. Um, and that's it. Like, to be honest, for me, that was, that's all that would be necessary because it's, it's a concept stage round, which means that the mm. only real thing that matters is you and why you. Everything else you can, ha you can speak to in a meeting. Like, you can describe why this matters in a meeting once you get in a conversation. But what you really want with a deck that you send out an email is just somebody to reply and say, yeah, I'll have a call. And then everything else becomes simpler. And so these standardized documents, while they were helpful pre-pandemic, because everyone saw this, you know, roughly the same company over and over and over again, um, investors just needed a checklist to say yes or no, yes or no, yes or no. And so these formats exist to say, was the problem good enough? Yes, no, yes, no. But now everything's a lot more emotional. The markets are so much more unpredictable. We're not seeing the same patterns we did pre-pandemic particularly with many of the technological revolutions happening, no one knows what the fuck is happening next. So the primary focus of most, in my opinion, good investors at this stage is who's building the company? And can I, can I trust them? And if I can, that's probably 90% of the, the investment thesis complete. And so you need a deck that says, you can trust me. Um, yeah. There you go. Hope that helped. Yes, Amazing. very helpful. Thank you so much for your time, Chris. We really appreciate it. It was so helpful, to be fair. It is my pleasure. And this was an experiment. We're just at 29 minutes, so I think it's time we call it a day. Yeah. <laughs> Thank right. you so much. Good luck Thank to you both. Too. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Chris. Bye. Have a good day. Bye-bye. You too.